So here we will start now uh, doing the simulation for daylighting. So uh, the first uh, thing is the component uh, which is called run daylight simulation. Here you can see that we have a honeybee object. So we need uh, to bring uh, this uh, honeybee object from uh, the component honeybee set energy plus zone construction, which is the last component we have used uh, um, in uh, creating or modeling our energy models. So here I will hook it up in the honeybee objects. Uh, it's important uh, to note that uh, honeybee uh, run daylight simulation uh, does not uh, account for uh, the shading devices. So I need to bring the shading devices from here, from the honeybee context, and to hook uh, them up in the honeybee objects. And here uh, we have said that we might not have the shading devices, but this may cause uh, uh, problems. So we might just, but it's okay, it's okay. Uh, I'm just saying because we don't have here, um, we have nothing here, but but it's okay. It's okay to have no shading devices during the experiment and to have uh, some time, uh, in a time uh, one or uh, whatever value for the shading devices and to have zero um, in other times. Uh, so here, the analysis recipe, um, which we will see now, it, it, it's called the Honeybee Annual Daylight Simulation. And it has the EPW weather file that we have chosen before to be in London. And uh, then it has the test points, which will be located in the uh, above the floor of uh, each space. And we have the PTS vectors test mesh um, and the RAD uh, parameters. And here in RAD parameters, we, we will use the default uh, available in Honeybee uh, RAD uh, parameters. And I will show you now, I will, I will also um, disconnect this so that you could see uh, the floor and the, the sizes of the mesh, but here we will have a problem. So I will just hook it up again and disconnect. Um, disconnect uh, the roof, the windows maybe, and the, the, the walls also. Because we need to see uh, what will what's gonna happen in each floor. Um, so now we have uh, taken another one, which is decomposed by type, and we will set the floors, expose the floors in case we have ones. We don't have exposed the floors in this case, uh, we have ground floors, so we will hook it up. So here we have the grid size. In this case, we want to minimize uh, the, num the calculation time. And, and I'm just showing you uh, what is going to happen here. So I'm going, I, I will uh, change it into uh, three, for example. But it's recommended that you use minimum two. Uh, the grid size is the distance between uh, the testing uh, the, the testing points and here the distance uh, base uh, surface which we are where, uh, where are you going to place the test uh, points in this case and then I will set this also into true I will do solution and recompute so that it could work sometimes we have uh, problems due to uh, issues with the uh, grasshopper itself. So uh, I turned it on this one, true, the true, but uh, it didn't run because here um, the shading devices, uh, because shading devices will run um, in a good way in energy, uh, in the energy simulation. If you don't have a shading devices, which means you have a zero value for all this into one and two, for example. And then set OK. Now the simulation runs in a good way. And here you will, you will have you will see three windows as you can see here. 
Um, as I told you before, the simulation, uh, the daylighting simulation takes uh, much more time. So I, I will, I will stop again the record and then get back to you when it uh, finishes. So uh, now the simulation is uh, finished and we have. So now the simulation is uh, finished and we have um, um, values uh, uh, coming out of uh, this uh, matrix. Um, so here, for example, if we if we hooked up uh, for the daylight autonomy, we're going to see values um, which actually uh, these values uh, represent the number of uh, dots um, that we decided here, we decided to have five um, a grid size. So as I told you, we have for each uh, 10 by five um, space, we have two, uh, just two um, uh, test uh, points. Uh, so here you can see that we have here, we have the zones. Each zone has uh, two values except for the core, which actually received uh, um, zero in both um, floors, so we have zero here. So, in order to work with this, um, with the values, these values coming out of uh, um, what we have told before, it read annual results. Uh, we will actually separate uh, first uh, separate uh, data, use the separate data, and book it up here, and then we will get the number. Which is the total 17 test points. We will here um, perform mass addition, uh, which is 160, in order to bring the total uh, value or percentage of the daylight autonomy. We will divide uh, the total number by uh, the number of the test points that we can uh, find from here. We have the test points coming out from here. So uh, I hooked it up to list uh, length, list length in order to know uh, the number, the length of uh, this. And then I will do a uh, perform mass addition. Uh, know that I have 18 test points, total of 18 test points. So it's gonna be divided here and you will have the daylight autonomy percentage, which is 8.8. .8. Uh, again, here in useful daylight autonomy, uh, uh, sorry, useful daylight uh, illuminance, uh, you, you can do the same thing. That's separate data, mass addition, and here you, have, you know that uh, from this uh, list that you have 18 uh, points, and here automatically it's going to be divided by um, the number of test points. The total value would be divided by the number of the test points in order to give you the uh, useful daylight ton uh, illuminance uh, percentage uh, during the year. Uh, so now we have here um, the number, which is um, useful daylight illuminance, uh, 100 to 2,000. And here we have also the daylight auton 